All right, good morning, guys. Uh, I guess you just finish up with your, with your do not question for the day. In your opinion, what do you think, sorry, do you think the overall increase in taxes helps or hurts the country as a whole? Explain your answer either way. So, um, and all, I think the uh, majority of people, uh, you know, their first thought when they think of taxes is, oh, you know, taxes suck, they're a bad thing. You know, that's just more money that I have to pay to the government that I don't get to keep, whether it be income tax, you know, tax they could take out of my check, or whether it be, you know, something like sales tax, or hey, you know, I got to pay this much money for the item, then I got to pay this extra money to the government, and, you know, a lot of people don't like that. And some other people might argue that, hey, you know, taxes can be a good thing because they go to pay for things like our fire department, our police department, you know, go to fix roads, streets, pay for our military, things like that. So, uh, answers could really go either way. The more most important thing is just kind of justify your answer either way. So whatever you guys have, make sure you have about 45 sentences, make sure you get it written down. So today, we're going to be shifting gears just a little bit. We're going to talk about a couple different uh, economic theories. So when I, talk, when I say economic theory, I mean that these are different ways of saying, hey, here's uh, different ways to look at the situation. Here's a couple different ways to solve the problem. Like, okay, if the economy's not doing so well, what should we do about that? There's more than one plan that kind of comes to mind. Uh, you know, people throw around the table a lot. So we're going to explore a couple of those today. So the first one we're going to discuss is something called classical theory. And once again, these are not all-encompassing definitions, just kind of giving you, you know, kind of a straightforward idea of what they were talking about. So classical theory. This idea that the market is self-regulating. So this idea that, hey, you know, nobody should have to step in and intervene at any point in time. The government should have to step in, you know, it will eventually fix itself. So for whatever reason, if we say, oh, uh, uh, there's a problem, uh, Walmart's charging way too much for TVs. So the government should ha shouldn't have to step in and say, hey, Walmart, lower your prices, you know, because uh, if people aren't buying them, you know, Walmart's obviously, uh, if, you know, people don't want to pay that certain price for that TV, then what are they going to do? They're not going to buy them. And so if Walmart realizes, hey, nobody's buying them, what is their response going to be? Oh, crap, we got to put them on sale. We have to lower the price. And so, once again, the market kind of fixes, uh, fixed that problem because Walmart wants to stay in business. They have to meet consumer demand. They have to lower those prices or offer something else that consumers want. So, classical theory. Just the idea that, hey, nobody has to step in and fix anything. The market will eventually fix itself. The economy will fix itself. So then we have something known as demand-side economics. So, demand-side economics is this idea that if you increase consumer demand, this will help the economy through their spending. So if we say for whatever reason, if we are in a recession or a depression, how can we help get us out of that? How can we help, uh, you know, people want to, how can we make people want to spend money? So this theory suggests that, hey, if we put more money in the pockets of everyday people, just, you know, average everyday citizens, then they're going to go out and spend that money. So if they spend the money, that, mean business, that means businesses are going to be making money. If businesses are making money, that means they can afford to hire more people. They can afford to keep people. And so if people have jobs, they have money to spend. And so it kind of uh, gets the cycle going. It essentially kind of kickstarts the economy by saying, hey, here's some money to spend. Go spend it, and it's going to help out the economy. It's kind of what we're seeing uh, uh, right now. People are throwing this, around this idea or they're trying to get this uh, stimulus package in place where, hey, we're going to give each person or each household X amount of dollars. Once again, the thinking behind that is, hey, if you give them the money, not only are they going to be able to survive and get by, but there's, those are also going to help those local businesses out as well. So that's demand-side economics. And then we have this kind of different approach, something called supply-side economics, where it says if we lower the taxes and regulations on businesses, uh, this will cause them to help the economy through their investments. And so uh, with demand-side economics, it's saying, hey, let's put more money in the pockets of everyday people. Supply-side economics is saying, hey, let's put more money in the pockets of businesses and corporations. The thinking is, hey, if they have more money to spend, if they have more money in their pocket because they're not having to pay these extra taxes or not paying have to pay these extra you know, fees for regulations or whatnot, they're going to have more money. If they have more money, that means they can afford to hire more people. They can afford to build a new factory, build a new location. That's going to create jobs. If you create jobs, people are going to have money to spend. And so once again, kickstarting the economy and getting the whole thing going. So demand side, supply side economics. It's basically two different ways of trying to solve the exact same problem. You know, basically asking the question, where should we put the money? Should we give the money to average everyday people or should we put it in the hands of business, businesses and corporations? 
what's going to help you know get the economy going again. So those are the two main differences. We're going to dive into a couple more specific uh, examples of those uh, in the next lesson. So uh, that's it uh, for the notes on a separate sheet or a separate, you know, however you guys turn this in. Uh, it's kind of in two parts. So first off, just kind of what we discussed here, which do you think of these two, uh, between dem uh, demand side and supply side, which do you think would be more effective? Which do you think, you know, would be uh, better to get the economy going and to help uh, the country and economy as, as a whole? And so uh, that's the first question. The second question, do you think that the economy benefits more or less from government intervention or interference? So do you think we are better off if the government kind of stays back? Or do you think we're better off, hey, if the government helps us out uh, when we have problems? So once again, first topic, I'm sorry, first question, which uh, side, demand side or supply side economic theory do you think is more effective and why? Then secondly, do you think that the economy benefits more or less from government intervention? Looking about five to six sentences on this one just because it's kind of a two-part question, a little bit longer. So, if you guys have any questions, feel free to write a question down in the comments or shoot me an email. If not, I'll see you guys next time.